right. you know so it means that this programming committee i mean a really fantastic selection of films um in general i am looking forward to the festival in yeah. general it's like my christmas yeah. um, getting to meet people we told the local filmmakers the visiting ones but in terms of films um i'm very excited to see kayla which is from colombia and um, I mean, uh, from a place called La Providencia, which I had never really thought about, a place in Colombia where they speak a sort of like English Creole and they refuse to speak Spanish. Um, so that's fantastic. Then there is El Technos from Cuba. That's great. All set on the roof. Then there's, of course, Green Days by the River. I mean, I think that is going to be so sold out. Uh, then Moco Jambi. Um, Back to Freeport. Um, you could go on and on. I could go on and on. Yeah, there's so many. I want you. Have. I want you to under before I leave you. I want you to underline something for me because it's so important. I think over the years, the people behind the film festival, mm -hmm. like yourself, working so hard to make it happen. Why is this film festival so important here in Trinidad Tobago? All right. Well, first of all, I think we need it. You know, it's very important for us to see ourselves on the screen. Yeah. To have our stories being told, and not just that for the audience, but also for the filmmakers to enable them to be able to tell their stories, to give them the support system and whatever professional development training we can, you know, gather for them, yeah. and um, and also to for the rest of the world, you know, to let them see what we are about, yeah. to see our talent. Yeah. You know, there really has been a burgeoning of talent. Um, you really see it every year with the quality of the films um, increasing. You see people moving from shorts to full-length narrative and the quality is really really coming up and and also you know we have our um, world cinema or panorama section right. so it's a great way to bring to our local audiences films from all over the world you know that pertain to us whether it's by heritage or um, or interests right. Um, films from all over the world, um, especially places like India, China, Africa. Showcasing, and showcasing outside of Hollywood. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That is very important, yes. Very, very important. Mil Milvina Hazard, I want to thank you very much for sharing with us this morning. We are building up, as I said, to the live press conference that will launch the 2017 Film Festival here in Trent Tobago. And Melvina is one of the ladies, uh, hardworking ladies behind the scenes. Um, and, and really, I just want you to remember, high on film, I just really loved it. Hashtag high on film. Check out the, the website. It's live, ttfilmfestival.com and on all social media platforms at TT Film Festival. Guys, it's happening. I'm seeing all the who's who. This, this is almost like the red carpet, you know. I feel, I feel like a red carpet, you know. Um, the film festival guide, Melvina showed it to us, and this is it. Um, it's very important, I think, over the next couple of weeks that you put your hands on, on one of this. It's called the Film Festival Bible. All the information is right here, um, and uh, you, you, you can't help but make sure and get a copy of this to make sure you are where you need to be when the action happens and starts from September 19th to the 26th. So, the first, one of the big films um, this year, Melvina would have alluded to it, Green Days by the River. According to how old you are, you would know that story because it's a story in Trent Tobago um, that is well known. Michael Mulida, a director here in Trent Tobago, has been doing some fantastic work. He has recreated this in a magnificent way that, to the big screen that you need to see. The film is an adaptation of Michael Anthony's classic 1967 novel of uh, the same name, Green Days by the River, and it brings to life the childhood memories of that book. Uh, set in the idyllic countryside of the 1950s in Mearo, it tells the story of a 15-year-old of, of 15 year old Shell, um, newly arrived in the village. He quickly uh, gets caught between uh, longing to be a man and his innocence in the face of adult cunning. With adolescent hormones raging amidst the breathtaking beauty of the local girls, the quiet storm that's bring may prove to be more than he can handle. And life never will be the same again. Michael Mulida is standing by. Let's go check him out because he is one of the guys, as I said, uh, major director that has been doing some fantastic Hi, work. Good, Michael Mulida is here with us. As I said, everyone arriving um, as we're getting ready to do the official launch. But Michael is here with us and spending some time with us this yes. morning. Facebook good Live. Morning. So glad to spend a little time with you this morning. Yeah. Congratulations, first of all. Green Days by the River. 
Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting. Where, where did this, I mean, taking a, a historic novel that connects to trying to be in such yeah. a way, where did the idea come from? Where did, when did it hit you? I mean, it was like, it was an interesting story if I had to get into it, but we had this script, a lady called Dawn Kamabach wrote this script, and she had intentions of doing it. And at some point in time, she emailed the script to me, and I read it. And then it took like five years before we revisited, revisited it. And then from the time we revisited it, me and the producer Christian were discussing it, and we were like, I think this is the right project for us to do. And we had like the ideas, we like the story of the boy, you know, the period. It was just a real pure story, and it just felt like on the film landscape, the next story that we wanted to tell. So, so you know, that's what came so, so, so, so give us a little sneak peek, because you, you, yeah. you'd have taken folks back to 1950s, 50s, 60s. So, so, so, so you painted that picture in the film, yeah. Trinidad and Tobago, 1950? Yeah, 1952, we went through the trouble, all the research, you know, we had a good team. Yeah. We went through the trouble to create that, that, that time, yeah. from the house to the wardrobe, to the, yeah, the, the, everything, everything. It was a lot of work, a lot of research, you know, to even just find a house to shoot it in. It's an old cocoa house to use. Um, but remember, the, it's set in Miaro. So, it have, you know, it's kind of hard, because a cocoa house it might not have been in Miaro, but it was just a real old, you know, we had to work with what exists now yeah. from 1952. So, it's, it's part of that. And then filming in the different landscapes across the whole country. I had, like, if you're on the inside, I had a small thing where I said, anywhere that I'd filmed before, and I shoot in there. Right. Like once anything you see in this movie, yeah, you have yeah. to be something you never saw before. Because, because you know what people say that, but that is um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is so, only me a road road. Yeah. If, if, if you watch the trailer, yeah, people yeah. is like, is this shot in yeah. Trinidad? Is it shot in Trinidad? Yeah. You know. So yeah, yeah. A lot of research goes into this. I mean, you said yeah, five yeah. years it took probably before you got well, recognized. A lot of work goes in behind the scenes. The, the five years was like we wasn't trying to make the movie. I had the script, right. uh, and I didn't own the rights to it or anything like that. So it was there, and then we revisited it. On, you know. But a lot of work goes in, you know, in terms of researching every aspect of, of the movie. Because you yeah, need to be, you might have a lot of historians, to have from music to, work, to clothing, to have a lot of people that would be like, yo, Michael, that's the wrong, the, the, you know, the wrong car, the wrong, you know. So we had to be on point with a lot of different things. Tell me, you, you're, you're a director. Yeah, I do. Uh, the, the, the, the acting, when you cast for, for, for a role like this, I mean, what is going through your mind? I'm sure lots of people would come forward. What's going through your mind in terms of recognizing, okay, this is the mm-hmm. guy to play, the boy. So, this is the star of the show. So, it has many tricks. Yeah. But one of the main things, casting is the most important thing, I think, for a director. Because that's what's going to introduce your tools to get a good performance. I tend to want, like, I'm looking for that like it's typecasting. So I want somebody who come in already, to, they resemble some of the attributes of this character. I mean, nothing like a big way, like, you know, but you could see them and that some of it in there, so they just need to bring that out and you need to, so the character Shell is very a little shy in the beginning. The lead who plays it, he already in real life was a little shy. A little shy. Yeah, so you're working with that and if you do good casting, but the truth is, is really a feeling is getting your gut. It's like, you just know it. So with our lead, Coming on the end, we had two people we were interested in to play Sh- Shelly. And it had a day where we brought them in like 9 a.m. and had both of them paired up with different people and different actors. Yeah, yeah. And one of them started to fade around midday, doing the takes. Like he wasn't getting, his performance was getting worse. And then you have this next person whose performance was getting better. Now we had to think of a movie you're shooting like 26 days where we filmed Green Days in. Wow. So imagine you need to have faith that this person could, he's in every shot of the movie. Basically, the whole movie. So yeah. he had a carry. Yeah, some stamina. He had some stamina. Yeah. So he have to be able. To, two weeks in, he can't be. I don't want to do this again. And, and he's 15 years old. He, it have to be the opposite. Like, yeah. what we should to now? Yeah. You ready to go? Da, da, da. And you're looking all those things beyond the acting. You're looking at any personality. And that's a lot to ask for, for from a 15 year old. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a lot to punish all So we had to find the right person. But in the end, I think we did, or we did. And when you watch the movie or the trailer and all these things, you see. In it, you know. So hashtag high on film. I don't have to ask you if you high on film yeah, because yeah, exactly. Michael is obviously high on film. But yeah. why have you been so high on film, though? That's that's the question I want to ask you. You have been involved in this for the last for, for, for the last few years. Why are you so high on film? And that's a good question. But you know, for me, it's really the film is my passion. So for me, time I did I did the UE film program and I got into film. And ever since, if you watch my track record, I've been delivering films to the film festival consistently over the years. But I think I love telling stories. 
and that's what excites me now. You know, so it's, it's have a moment on set, like in this reel, when everything coming together and you're directing, and you have your actors and your camera moving, and like you see the performance, and you know you're creating something, and that high, I just call the flow, almost like you're in a zone and you know it's happening, because something else has happened where like you're connected to everything that happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really happening. It's have that type of experience. And you know the work that you're producing, hopefully it's good. He's experienced it at different moments too, in the editing room, yeah. on, on set. And it's really giving those feelings. And you know, we kind of live, live for that. But at the same time, we want to tell stories. Like me, as a career filmmaker, I've been stretching and trying to step up each way as we do a documentary. And we do Green Days and trying to get the productions bigger and do more and, you know, those kind of things. Michael, I want to cut that you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, now what I was going to say is what might be interesting is, like, let me pull Shea in, if you don't mind. You want to ask she, your schedule? She, quick. She, she, she, she, she had a part to do in... She is the Palami. She. She, she, she is the who? Palami. That's the character's father in the movie. Oh. So that's Shea Rodriguez. So she, I know. I, I, I, she, she, she, she, so here's the, the joke, right? Yeah. She know me since I about this high. <laughs> he looking like a young boy, though. He looking like a young boy, but he know me since he's about this high. <laughs> My brother, how are you? How are you going? Yeah. Good, good, good, good to see you. So, so, so you chose she. Why? Because well, I used to cough good. That's true. Because the father is sick in the movie. Right. Cough good. Right. But this man come to do his audition and cry down the place. You remember that? No, yeah. he coughed down the place cough, with cough, some cough. tears. And I say, all right, all right, all right. It was real cough. It was real cough. Yeah, he real. It was real. I gave him what was the... The, the, the actual um, trained cough that they teach you at drama school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was convinced. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you enjoying this now, she? I'm enjoying I always enjoy this. I, um, well, better in front or behind, because I work either way. I'm a filmmaker yeah. of my own right, yeah. um, but I'm also a trained actor. The, um, the government of Trinidad and Tobago had sent me on a scholarship some years ago to study theatre at the Edna Manley School of the Arts in Jamaica, and, and I did the best I could. So here I am, and Green Days by the River is just evidence that they, that they, they made a the right choice. Hey, come on. Uh, this is Shelley. This is my son. This <laughs> I love him, and I call him Pookie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Shelley, how, how challenging was, was, was Green Days by the River for you? Um, I don't find it was actually challenging. Yeah. We were but just talking about how, how yeah. a 15 year, you're 15 years? How old are you? I'm um, 17. You're 17. Yeah. And Long days of shooting. How, how how did you handle it? Mm, well, it wasn't actually tough because I'm nocturnal. It's just really active at night, so <laughs> I really, really wasn't thinking that it would be a challenge because I would find ways to make it very easy. So that came out pretty good. Was this your first role in terms of acting? Um, not really my first role. You did, you did well, well, yeah, but just for school plays and stuff. Right, right, right. So, but this is something new and. Hope it takes me somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no, no, no, no. You're trying, you're trying to get a picture. We live, we live on Facebook. We want to thank 868 Live for making all this possible. This, folks, is one of the feature films that you will see over the course of the Trans-Lego Film Festival, Green Days by the River. Fantastic work done by this crew. And we can't wait to unveil it here. Uh, to the Trans-Tobago Film Festival launch. We are standing by Michael and the yeah. team. Shea, good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, where are we going now? We are going to Sean Hodgkinson. We're running out of time, so let's let's head quickly to Sean Hodgkinson. <laughs> you know, he looking like he acting. Eh? We read it. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, how you doing? Good, sir. How are good you? to see you. Good to see you. Good, so, another one of you directing. You do some producing. You do. You you wear a couple hats. I do some cleaning as well. You do some cleaning as well. And cooking. You have to do everything. You have to get it done. Your film this year is called The Weekend. Yes, sir, it's I, I, I know some people who you pull down on that beach house to, to, to oh, make the weekend out. Which of the people that we put I do a couple. I don't want to call any names. We like on Facebook, but I don't <laughs> want to call any names. But um, tell me about this one. This one this one was something that I think is a little close to your heart. Yeah, I mean, uh, the weekend started off as a project that was supposed to be uh, an insider look at, at some of my filmmaking friends. Um, it started off with uh, Marcia Henville and myself. It was just a group of friends? Yeah. Um, we were actually up at our beach house one day, liming, and you know, Marcia dressed all raggedy and in tatters, and the neighbor drove past and was like, "Who's this woman on your property?" Astush, Astush, Astush girl, Astush girl. And Marcia and I were like, "Wow, this is pretty hilarious. What if we sort of looked at these social issues that go on in China with class and race and all that stuff?" And that's how it was born. And then Marcia passed. We shelved the project because it's too hard, too hard to like just even look at it. 
And then a couple of months later, a group of us were liming a Kia Rollock, who's in traffic, and Aurora Herrera, who's also the first lady of traffic. And we're like, why don't we do something? Like, no one's doing anything in the industry. Everybody's just complaining about there's no funding. Everyone's just bitter. Look, you have a house. You can write. You can direct. You can act. Come. Let's do it. Let's look. What can we pull? And we looked at the weekend. Um, we pulled everybody we knew. Stephen Hadid, Kia Rollock, Chris Smith. Cindy Daniel, Ayana Cezanne, like people I've always wanted to work with. How many, how many people were down there? We got about 32 people. As in acting? On, in, the in cast is 12, right. and the crew is about another 12. So we had all these people in one little beach house yeah, yeah. for a weekend. The actors were supposed to stay at a property down the road, which ended up being filled with roach feces. Right. So they couldn't stay there. So we all stayed in the house together, and that created this energy that you can't recreate. Yeah. And the actors all got together, and I came up with the original concept, but the script was everybody put in lines and dialogue, and it was truly a collaborative process. Why are you high on film, my brother? You have been involved with this thing for some time. You have done some fantastic work, and you continue to do great work. Um, why, why are you high on film? It's something I've always wanted to do. I remember I was about maybe 10 years old, and I put on Cinemax, and there was a scene from the Poseidon Adventure when the ship flipped over, and I was like, holy crap, I, wa- I want to do that. And now I get to do that, and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. People, people say, Sean, this, I mean, I no money in this. What we're we doing this for? I mean, you know, this is little trying to be go. You can't, you can't reach Hollywood. Why is this so important to you over the years, and you're stuck to your guns over the years? I think it's important to see ourselves and hear ourselves. I think Trinidad is so unique that different parts of the island, people talk differently and sound differently. And I think that's my geographical background. But I think it's important. We get bombarded with foreign content all the time. And the film festivals gives us an opportunity to see and hear ourselves on the big screen. But we need to be able to monetize it. I mean, the weekend we did on a budget of 17,000 TT dollars. 17,000 TT dollars. Everybody volunteered their time and effort. To make it happen but that's not sustainable so we want to show people listen we did this with nothing yeah. can you imagine you actually gave us some funding yeah. what we could actually achieve yeah. so we'll try it thing what are you looking forward to most as the film festival draws now oh i want to see green days i know michael worked really really hard on it so i'm really excited to see what he's come up with sean hodgkinson ladies and gentlemen um he's one of the directors and as i said sean does everything i've uh-huh. seen him in action as i say he cook he clean he wash he's he's one of those directors producers that does everything congratulations my brother looking forward to seeing the weekend the film festival we are getting ready everybody kind of now milling around um I, I have a group that i need to go and talk to uh, let me let me tell you that about that group first of all that group is a group of young people they are called the rbc youth jury now outside of all the films that you will see there are a couple of films designated and dedicated toward the youth and youth protagonist stories there's a group of young people um, that I will introduce you to now quickly that are looking at some of these films and will choose the best of them, um, the one that they thought drove the story of young people the best. Let's go and check them out. Hello, hello, hello, hello. You are now live on Facebook. <laughs> but you all are accustomed to that because you all go live on Facebook every day. Every day, every day. So quickly, let me, let me get some names here. This is the RBC Youth Jury. Well, I'm Nick. Shivana. I'm Charles. I'm Anais. You are? Anais. Shania. All right, guys, so I'm, I'm going to quickly just kind of get from you guys. This is, this is the young man here, too? You're the youngest of the group? Yeah. I'm Dominic. Dominic. So I'm going to quickly try to get from you guys. You are, have the responsibility of looking at some of the film that directed solely toward youth and youth stories. What will you guys be looking for in terms of selecting the best of the best? I would be looking for his cinematography and the plot of the film. I would be looking at the screenwriting, like in terms of how would the things are played out. Right. Is it that you're looking for different things, or you, you all have like come together and said, okay, you would look at that, or, or you're looking at in totality? Well, as a young person, I look at how the entire film relates to me itself, and like that's basically how it's going to flow and stuff like that. I'm looking for like the struf- struggles of youth, basically. I'm looking for the messages the films have directed to the youth 
because I think today that the youth are struggling. So I really want to see what these people portray in the films to the youth to let them relate. This is just so amazing. I never thought one, two, three, four, five, and let me just get from this young man. What are you looking forward to and looking for in these in these films? Well, what we're going to be looking for is, um, as all of them said, the screenwriting, the um, you know, the script, the characters, mm -hmm. and all the components that come together to make a great film. Right. All of them more likely looking at different aspects of this room. I thought I would have got some re repetitions there. I got no repetitions among this group, which means that it's going to be a very holistic view of uh, most of what you're going to see. How many youth films do you guys have to look at? How many? Um, you know? I'm not sure. There's 10 films. Ten, ten, yeah. ten. And you're choosing the best of the best. Um, is that going to be a democratic decision or is there a leader in the group? There's no leader in the group. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need. So it's going to be a vote. It's going to be a vote. It's an, a unanimous either, a unanimous vote. Yeah? I want to wish you guys all the best. Thank you very much for being part of the Transvago Film Festival. Let me get a little squeeze between you guys. So we are standing by. We're getting ready. Um, I'm, I'm seeing more and more people filling in, um, smiling faces, and, and, and everybody who is all part of making the 2017 Film Festival possible. Remember, guys, September 19th to the 26th. We want to thank 868 Live for making it all possible. We are live on Facebook. I'm Joel Villafana. Such a pleasure to be a host uh, this morning. We're standing by. We, what's the time? 9.57. Are we on Trinity time? Or are we, or, or, how, how, how are we looking? We looking good? We're looking good. Hey, look, I'm on Facebook. The entry as well. <laughs> I didn't recognize I was live and serious. You know, look, I'll actually live. Actually live. Yeah, okay, actually live. So the media is standing by. The media getting here. And uh, the it's building up. The anticipation is building. Um, Joanna, what am I doing next? People. Right. Hashtag. Hashtag high on film. Hashtag TTFF17. Hashtag TT Film Festival. Hashtag us. We are live on Facebook right now. My producer just did my job for me. Yeah, but that's important. Um, you guys, it's all about the social media network. So we, are, we want you to be part of the film festival. You must feel what all the work that this crew would have been doing over the last few weeks and years to make this festival over the next couple of weeks, September 19th to the 26th, possible. Hashtag high on film. Hashtag TTFF. Hashtag... Trent Tobago Film Festival. High on film. I, I just love the hashtag. Um, and really and truly, Magella Mora and her crew, when they came to me, it, it was really something that I think that I just wanted to be part of So as, as we celebrate ourselves on the big screen. So important, I think, to celebrate ourselves on the big screen. So the press conference will happen, and uh, Magella Mora will have a, a, a sort of live discussion. Um, if it is, we can probably just look stage side for a bit. Hello. So this is this is this is what will happen here in just a bit. We are getting ready to toss to that. But Magella Mora will have a live discussion in front of all the stakeholders, the media, everyone here, and you will get a sense of uh, what is to come, September nineteenth to the twenty sixth. The Chicago Film Festival. Um, in its twelfth year, believe it or not, in its twelfth year, I, I would really love. Hello. When you get to speak to pretty ladies, you take the opportunity to speak to pretty ladies. How are you? Oh boy, I am well, thank you. When you get to talk to celebrities, you take those opportunities also. <laughs> you are here. Tell me, tell me your, your, your, your drive and your passion for being here. So, first of all, I'm a real film lover. Right. I think I was at the first film festival. I'm yes. not sure. I can't be certain. Can't be certain. I was back in Trinidad. <laughs> Um, but we are here, I'm here for BP, wearing my corporate hat. You know, we're really glad to be back in TNT Film Festival. Yeah. And we're back with a bang this year as a sponsor of Green Days by the River, which everybody's excited yeah, to see. Yeah, that's, that's a big one this year. Correct, the big one this year. Uh, uh, I mean, tell me, because the sponsors play such an important role. I mean, I was just talking to Sean Hodgkinson, and I mean, he was talking about, you know, sometimes uh, he did his film the weekend on a 17,000 TT budget. Mm, um, that wasn't the Green Days budget. No, no, no. no. <laughs> But, but, I mean, it's such an important role, and you would know that. Um, are we reaching that point where you think people are buying into seeing ourselves on the big screen? Absolutely. So when BP decided to do the Renegades movie, it's because two-thirds of the content we consume as, as media people in Trinidad yeah, yeah. is via video. So the only way to tell our stories is with video and film, and that's why corporate needs to support film, and that's why we're so glad to be back in the festival. They're wrapping me up. No problem. They're wrapping me up. Good place to wrap. They're wrapping me Ready up. <laughs> Guys, it's all about the Trinidad Film Festival. We want to thank all the folks that took time to speak with us this morning. We are getting ready to take you live stage side to Magella Moro 
and her crew. Thank you so much to 868 Live for making it possible. We are here. We are getting ready. September 19th to the 22nd, to the 26th rather. And we will be celebrating film here in Trantabago and across the wider region. I'm Joel Villafano. I'll see you soon. Welcome everybody. My name is Bruce Paddington. I think you all know me. Um, did you like the trailer? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. And, you, and hopefully it's going to be shown a lot of times on Flow, on, um, at the cinema, at Movie Town, and, uh, and other venues. Um, the old adage is that it takes two to tango. Or is it two to tango? Um, but I think to put together... A film festival takes many, many more than that. So even though it's not my job to thank everybody, I have to acknowledge the tremendous support that we've had to allow us to put, put together our 12th edition of the Trinidad Tobago Film Festival. Um, obviously, we could not have done it without our sponsors. They are in the rooms, I think, somewhere. Um, and Flo has been with us for 10 years, so, it, so it's a milestone for them. And that shows great support. You know, sometimes a sponsor will help you out for a year or two years, but 10 years, that's fantastic. We also have, they're all on the, if I forget anyone, but um, basically um, we have the leading sponsor in the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts. That's, it's great to have the Ministry the ministry to support us. The minister herself has been very, very friendly, very supportive, very, uh, and 
we're, we're obviously very, very pleased. Um, we have BP. BP have been with us before, and they, I'm just telling me they have renewed for next year, so we're very, very pleased with BP. They've renewed even before the festival started, so that's great. So, um, we have supporting sponsors, um, UN Women, IDB, contributing sport, sport, um, sponsors, RBC. Um, and then we have the diplomatic service, the embassies. Um, with us, we have from Canada, the High Commissioner, from Costa Rica, the Ambassador, from Panama, um, and the Ambassador sends her regrets, but, she's, um, but they're, they're showing a fantastic film at the film festival. And so they are helping us out. All the embassies, not all, but most of the, many of the embassies are helping us out with films, with guests, and, and all to make a richer festival. Um, I think that's it. So let me hand you over to Magella Moreau, our Director of Public Relations, who will um, start the session. Thank you. Yeah, we notice. <laughs> um, I'm not sure you're not hearing me, obviously. And um, I'd also like to thank 868 Live. Um, they have been kind enough to offer in-kind services and live stream us on our Facebook page. So thank you to Marcus and his crew. We continue to be um, excited by the quality of um, films and the work being done by local filmmakers who uh, many of you who are um, either involved or familiar with the industry know that you have to have passion uh, to do this because it's not easy. Um, the graft of it, the eternal search for funds and so on, um, it's a real challenge. So you've either got to be crazy or passionate to do it. And I would therefore like to acknowledge and pay tribute to those filmmakers, well, all filmmakers, but certainly those who are in the room today. I know Michael Muladar is here. I saw him. Um, and any other filmmakers who are here. I don't know if Kyle Sahadio is here, Sean Hodgkinson. Are you here? Stand up. Let people see you. Let them see the mad people that do this. There they are. Is Kyle here? So we thank you. Um, because, as we know, film isn't just about film. It's so much more than that, especially for us from the Caribbean. It's about having a voice in the wider world. It's about preserving our culture. It's about reminding our young people who they are and allowing them to see themselves and therefore understand who we are in all our many dimensions. Um, so this is important work. So with that, I'd like to introduce the people, um, or some of the people that allow this to be possible for us, and that is our sponsors. And I would like to introduce um, Trudy Dervatai. She is the Director of Communications and Stakeholder Relations at um, Columbus Communications Flow. Um, Welcome. I'd also like to invite Daniel Jones, who's the manager of corporate communications at BP Trinidad and Tobago, uh, to join us. And also Patricia Henderson Brown, um, who is a consultant at the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts. Thank you all. I don't know, women, just powerful women taking over. Great. It's phenomenal. All right. So, um, we're just going to have a conversation, <laughs> and I'd like to start with you, um, Trudy. Um, Flo, as Bruce said, has continued to support the festival over 10 years, which is phenomenal. But um, 
a lot of it and a lot of our conversations have been around um, Caribbean content. And I just wanted you to tell us a bit about why um, the development of Caribbean content or why Caribbean films resonate so much with Flo. Sure, thank you so much for Jello. Thank you so much for that. So the thing is, I'd really like to start... Hi, Mike. Mike. Okay. <laughs> so I'd really like to start with the iconic words of our soca artist, Marshall Montano, when he sings, Let we make a memory. Because I think for all of us, this is so important. What you guys are doing, what our Caribbean filmmakers are doing, what we are able to contribute to Caribbean content is really important. Because this is really the way that we get to see ourselves on the silver screen. That we get to hear ourselves speaking in our own accents. So we're not listening to anybody else with their accents. We're listening to us speaking to each other. So we recognize how very important the local film industry is and how very important the Caribbean film industry is. And that's why we're investing so heavily in the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival, because we recognize that it is one of the major ways in which we're able to bring our filmmakers together, we're able to showcase their work and really put it out there for the wider world. So for us, it's very exciting. For us, it's very important, and it's also a key way that we can really invest in our communities. Okay, thank you. Um, so let us talk about VOD, and I know that there is some discussion um, to be had with it um, in terms of the filmmakers, but what does it offer from the point of view of the filmmaker and, as well as the point of view of the audience? And for those who aren't familiar, it's video on demand, VOD. <laughs> So the video on demand format is <clears throat> one format that we have really opened up to our local filmmakers. And the reason for that is that it gives them an opportunity to showcase their work and to put that work out there, not just here in Trinidad, but across the Caribbean as a whole. So that it gives them the opportunity with a little bit of marketing and a little bit of creativity, they really can reach a very wide audience. They can also earn income. So that it's something that we hope that more of our young filmmakers, more of our up-and-coming stars, will take the opportunity to really take full advantage of. And apart from that, of course, um, for those who use it, for our viewers, it's an opportunity to see all the films that you really want to see. Not just the local ones, but the foreign ones. So, for example, Wonder Woman is being released soon. For those of you who missed it in cinema, you can see it on the VOD platform. And also, if you missed one of the great mu movies like King Arthur, you can also see that. So it's an opportunity to have a great lime at home with your family and to really enjoy some of the movies that you really want to look at. Right. And in terms of the local films, of course, because that's what we are really pushing, for um, families who want to see that, I mean, it's very easy for them to access that or... How does that all work? Most certainly. So the thing is, you just go onto the platform. Um, there is, of course, a fee attached to it. It's about $36. And you can access local films. Um, some of the, the movies that would have been featured last year, for example, would already be on the VOD platform once the filmmakers wanted to make use of the, the platform. But it's very simple. You go in. Um, it's on your, um, your remote. You press the VOD platform and you go in and you pay, select what you want and you pay for it. Very simple okay. and very enjoyable. And 100% still going back to the filmmaker? Still going back to the filmmaker, all of it actually. And that, of course, is part of our support for our local filmmakers and for the industry. Okay, great. Um, so do you want to talk about the Flow Ultra package? Of course I want to talk about it. <laughs> so just wanted to share with everyone that we are giving away two Flow Ultra packages free for one year so for an entire year you don't have to pay for cable tv that's hundred about 145 channels you don't have to pay for, in, for your internet 30 megabits you don't have to pay for your home phone so wonderful deal so i would advise you sign up when you go out to see the movies mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is as part of the film festival during Correct. that one week okay great thank you you're welcome danielle my mic is working. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so, of course, BP has a long track record also of supporting the arts. And now we're seeing 
um, specific support for two films this year, yes. in particular Green Days by the River and To Be a Renegade. Um, so what I'm wondering is, one, what led to that investment, but two, what does it signal? Is this good news for filmmakers? I know there's some of them in the room. <laughs> what does it mean? It's great news for filmmakers. Film and the film festival is the best news for filmmakers in Trinidad and Tobago. And that's why after 55 years, BP Trinidad and Tobago, we had to take a pause last year. We are thrilled to come back to film festival and be back with a bang. So in the year that we didn't do film festival, um, we supported filmmakers directly, which is very difficult. So um, yet just yesterday, um, there was a story carried that spoke to, spoke to the fact how difficult it was for even Green Days, which is opening the film festival, to get funding. Budgets, when they come to us and they have millions with an S behind it, hmm. gets very, very difficult. But when you support something like the film festival, you create a platform that inspires filmmakers and hopefully rallies corporate Trinidad and Tobago to support film in a meaningful way. So that's why BP is back. That's why we're back with a bang. And also, we tried our hand this year at supporting a film with the To Be a Renegade documentary, which we're thrilled to have in the festival. But that's because it's time that corporate TNT recognizes that a press release doesn't cut it anymore. Five years ago, when we started supporting Film Festival, if you didn't take a picture, it didn't happen. Now, if there's no video, it just didn't happen. So it's time that we all wake up as corporate TNT and stand up and really support film in a meaningful way. And that's why BP Trinidad and Tobago is here. That's why we're thrilled to have supported two films like Green Days and To Be a Renegade. And really, really happy to be back for the TNT Film Festival to build that platform for Caribbean cinema. There was um, something, thank you. There was something interesting um, uh, that you were saying to us in a, a meeting that had nothing to do with this, actually. And that was about To Be a Renegade. Uh, I thought it interesting. You said you kind of hadn't seen it and took her hands off. Of, that's very unusual for an investor, I have to say. To, so you were asking us how it was. And I am fascinated by that. And I wonder if you could say a bit about that. I know I wasn't sure. planning that's, to ask That's you fine. That, but, <laughs> yeah. fine. Um, to be around again really started in my heart. Um, and for those of you parents or anyone that's going to read the stories that the media carries or see them, there's nothing better you can do for your child than expose them to the arts in Trinidad and Tobago. My yeah, godmother yeah. and mother took me onto the track to push pan in 1996 and 1998. So I happened to be there when the Renegades was winning. So I was there to hear, and my paws are raising, Kitchener's Killer B, for award-winning panorama performance, called on the track in a T-shirt that was given away for free and not understanding the meaning. Fast forward many years later, and I work for BP. And my colleagues are telling me, you know, you can't just slap a logo on something. You, know, you need to understand the renegades. You need to understand the history and the vibe. And I was like, well, then I need to learn what it is to be a renegade. And my godmother used to say that. You need to understand what it means to be a renegade. And I thought, it is time for this to come out of the history books that aren't being told in schools. Or the various books that we supported that told a little snippet of the history of the band. And to hear it in the band's own words. So our um, filmmaker, James will tell you, I said repeatedly, I don't want to put my corporate fingerprints all over this. This is, this is how I envisioned it. And James brought that to life. But it really meant, when I met in the film festival and it, um, it was submitted, I had really only seen like maybe draft one of Rushes. And I understand that for many corporate entities, that's not possible. But I want to talk about what it meant for us that when we showed version 17 <laughs> to my team, and I felt really scared. You know, we'd spent this money and it didn't say anything like, how much money BP had spent on the Renegades over the past 40 years. So I put a little wording in there, and my team looked at the film and they said, well, it's good, but what's that stuff about 6 million US in 40 years? That doesn't seem like it belongs in your documentary. And I looked around and recognized what an amazing company that I work for that can bring a documentary to life in that way, because it's not about us. So... I think when we talk about film, when we talk about the film festival, whether it's Green Days or it's Moko Jumbi or whatever the project is, it's not about slapping your logo up there and telling your story, corporate. It's about telling the story of the lives the film will touch, the people whose stories are being showcased. And that's why I think, yes, it's, it's our project, it's my baby, you know, they tease me about that. But To Be a Renegade is about the band, by the band, in their own words, and with no corporate fingerprints all over it. 
So I hope that other corporate entities can stand up in that way. It's the same for Green Days. I just spoke to Michael. I have not seen the film. My entire team keeps asking me, are you sure about this movie? You know, what if it, it's going to have that scene in there from the book? To which my response is, Michael Anthony is a brilliant author. <coughs> he stands behind this project. These are two young, UE-educated, film-curated, upstanding citizens in our society. And that's what film is about. So we are thrilled to sit here, not just on stage as a sponsor, but I'm thrilled to be here as a member of a company that understands film, understands what culture is for Trinidad and Tobago, and really, really wants to see film happen in a major way. Foreign exchange can be earned from film. And when we talk about diversification as a country, BP as an energy company wants the country to expand and diversify. Film is but one of the many, many levers, and I hope that other filmmakers will be inspired to do what Michael, James, others have been able to do, not just in the past year. You must listen to their story, how long it took for Green Days to come together, how persistent they were. Um, and I know there are many, many other films in development that are sitting in people's minds. Knock on the right doors, knock on them consistently, keep beating the drum because film is the future. Film is how our culture will be told for generations to come. Yeah. Great, thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, Stephen got my passion there. She knows it exists. Yeah, and that was one I just pulled out. <laughs> Sorry. So you got real, Danielle. There. Sorry, unedited. No, <laughs> All right, so that is a nice segue then into talking about the fact right. that there are going to be, there is going to be a free screening of To Be a Renegade, Correct. sponsored by BPTT. Correct. Um, so we thought so that you used to be, be able to do a lot more in film festival because that's the reality. Everybody has had budget cuts. Not one person sits on the stage or the many that used to sit here um, that will be able to talk about the funding environment has changed. So we thought, well, if we're going to do one thing in the festival. We want to make it accessible to more. So we have some free passes. They are available from Movie Town when the festival, just before the festival starts. Magello could be honest. So you go and you collect these, two per person ideally. Um, and you can get to see To Be a Renegade for free and get $30 in food, which isn't shabby. So you get to see a local documentary, support the TNT Film Festival, get some good family fun, maybe inspire the next generation of panists. Grannies can take their grandchildren. My godmother's going to be there um, to see this film come to life. That's what it's about. Um, film Festival makes film accessible. So I'm thrilled to see the diplomatic core here. Um, I hope that more people will go out and see films that, you're right, yes, with our own accent, but a foreign language film helps develop the mind in a different way. Um, and I first saw a foreign language, foreign language film right here in Trinidad and Tobago because of the Film Festival. So whether you choose to see our film for free, to be a renegade, awesome film, right? Um, or you choose to see another film in the <coughs> festival. It's the best money you can spend, really, in September. And it's just so darn cheap. And you're also doing a special screening for the Renegades uh, team, which I think is great, too. It's Correct. Well, uh, one of our corporate values is respect. Another is one team. We have to ask the band's permission. Can we do a documentary? And a lot of my friends in PR are like, what the hell? You spend a million dollars a year. You can do what you want. That's not how that works. The Renegades are an extended part of our family. Um, we put our brand on there because they are us. So we asked their permission, and they approved it, and they agreed for us to, to be in the rhythm section doing a panorama performance. That's a real thing. Um, and actually commented how infrequently I was in the yard because I wanted to stop my PRI from picking up things that mm. we should definitely film. But really, I'm thrilled to be a part of the festival. I'm thrilled to bring this film and the many others that are using the film festival platform to bear. And really, all we sell at BP Trinidad Tobago is our reputation. So if the people that are going out to see film feel better about Trinidad and Tobago and they can feel better about corporate TNT, that's a win for us and a win for the country. Great, thank you. Um, before we move on uh, to Patricia Henderson-Brown, I know that I'm seeing Shay um, in the audience, Shay Rodriguez. I saw the young man who is the lead yeah. in Green Days, the team from Green Days, the actors. We had the filmmakers stand up. Yes. This, this young man is <coughs> phenomenal. He's in the lead. It's his first time acting. Put your hand up. Sorry, I've forgotten your name. Put your hand up. Yeah, he's the lead actor. He plays Shell, and he's phenomenal for a first comer. We know Shay's acting. You know, you're a veteran. I know yes. you're not that old, but... <laughs> since Bim. Ah, since, since Bim did. But um, I just wanted to recognize um, the actors as well. And anybody else from any other film that's here? 
Any of the actors? Anand as well from Green Days. And, oh, hi, hi. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Gadari. Mr. Gadari. <laughs> Mr. Gadari, you're bad, though. <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it is a great film, by the way, Daniel. But we'll be talking about we'll that later. We'll see it together on the opening I've seen night. it. I've seen it. So Gosh, I wasn't just saying up. that. <laughs> All right. So thank you. Thank so, you. Um, Patricia Henderson Brown, um, you are with the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts and also one of our leading sponsors. Um, thank you. We are going to be doing something together and we have seen the announcements already start about National Patriotism Month. Yes. Um, and I just wanted to ask you what role you, the ministry, sees film playing in that whole discussion around patriotism and what it means to be a patriot. Tough one, eh? <laughs> the, if you recognize Patriotism Month has been deliberately placed between the two holidays of Independence and Republic Day, both of which engenders pride, a sense of pride within nationals. And the ministry felt in a continuum that we would highlight activities that would do such and bring it to the nation's attention. Our mission in the ministry is to highlight through film, through culture, through communication, through lectures, and particularly films. We have an interest in the film, film part of, of development in our nation to engender that pride and to showcase the achievements of our nationals, both our nationals, in every sphere of activities in this country. Um, if, you rec if you've been listening to some of the ads, you would see that we have, we have had lectures. We are going to highlight the pan. We are going to highlight theater. And of course, we had a strong interest in the film festival of 27, given the diversity of what you are going to be presenting. And we want to congratulate you for the work that you've done so far on behalf of the minister. We, this is not the first time that we have ventured into, into funding films. We have done mm -hmm. so before. One recent has been the life of Ulrich Cross. We were hoping we would have seen that up. And we did get a chance to view, view the, view the, the, the um, trailer and we were quite excited in terms of funding that. And we have filmed, we have funded other films as well. Um, the ministry thinks, and we have seen that through culture and the arts, particularly, it is who we are. We, it exists within communities. It is community development, culture and the arts. In communities, and, and as an experienced community development officer for 40 years, you see a diverse of talents. You see people doing things without prompting. I have seen children shooting in, in, in as far as Brasso Seco with a, a camera or a gift from maybe a corporate sponsor, a river that is running within a community that is beautiful, and they're using it just to make, and they tell you, I'm making a film. And therein lies, I, in my estimation, and I think the ministries, the, the, the essence of who we are as a people, the talent that exists within this country, we know Funding it is a different matter, of course, and of course I'll bring it to public's public. We would like to fund everything that comes before us, but it is sometimes very difficult and we have to weigh what is, what is going to make the kind of thrust <clears throat> that speaks to what we do in the terms of our mission. The film festival is perhaps, is, I would say, one of the highlights of Patriotism Month because it's going to be visual to our people in terms of, of diverse I want to focus on, on green days by the river. I mean, all of us, all of us, if it's an exam, if it's for reading pleasure, have read green days by the river. Recently, we funded, if I may, uh, a, a group of young men who are attempting to make an animated game of green days by the river. Um, they have started the process. Of course, they're young, so funding is tight. But that tells you the type of, of thought that goes into creativity in this land. And um, we are excited to be part of this journey. And um, don't worry, we are your partners in every sense of the word, and I hear conversations of next year. So um, we are honored to be here. Okay, great. Um, and I just want to underscore that, that idea of film, and you know, critical theorists, mm -hmm. talk, about, theorists talk about it. Film as a vector 
for cultural identity yeah. and developing a sense of nationhood about, about how people see themselves but also are seen by others. So, yeah, so just to add to that, we are, our contribution to National Patriotism Month is a day of screenings on Republic Day, which is September the 24th, of a day long uh, of films from Trinidad and Tobago at Movie Town, Port of Spain, San Fernando, and Tobago. They are $30, they're not free, they're $30. But, you know, it's $30. $30. Yeah, at that. Movie Town. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, in that discussion about, um, you know, I guess everybody now, because of the technology, does pick up a camera phone, mm -hmm. you know, a smartphone, etc., and can make a film. But as we know, in our business, which is the industry of film, not the home movies that the school children make That's sometimes okay. and, and pass around, but, um, but they can start there, though. Um, the, the industry of film requires that um, the training, the graft, it's what UE does, you know, um, and, and others, and what we are also trying to do. And you've joined us in terms of starting at the beginning, which is script writing. So we are also going to be, through your yes. support, um, doing, we're doing more than one script writing uh, workshop, but this is a continuation of one that we began in March, and um, the, the filmmakers uh, working with somebody for, out of Jamaica, who's based in the States, and Mima Reis, are going, they were given some assignments, and now it's the second part, part two, and we thank you for that, um, because it's actually really very important, the, the the craft of screenwriting or script writing is very important, so thank you. Can I add something, if I may? Yeah. <clears throat> we, just, we recently concluded the, our best village season. And uh, part of patriotism, we're going to be featuring the best of best village, which is the first, second, and third um, winners of, of theatre of the best plays. And I want to challenge the film company, if I may, on the ministry's behalf. Film festival. That in there, yeah. in there, in, in best village, which is so seldom appreciated in terms of the class levels within this country because perhaps it's not marketed in the right way. Um, that there are great stories and there are great script writers and some of the plays, and I'm going to invite you to the one that's going to be to the film festival that will be on the 19th and 20th, 18th and 19th at Queen's Hall, September. And um, September, <coughs> sorry, yes, and um, the second and third, it's all right, <laughs> yeah. second and third of October right. at Sapper. And um, you'll be featuring the, the, the first, second, and third winners of their great stories. One of them, Bombasa, they will be featuring tete a -tete, are featuring their play on the 14th to the 17th, I think, of, of, of September at Queen's Hall. And the ministry has made it their tickets. We've made it public. We've given them funding for this. And um, I want to challenge you that, to explore that in terms of some of the scripts that come out of Best Village that are great scripts that can be developed. It's a thought that's showing out. They're good. No, we and catch the archives, it. We'll catch it and challenge you to join us. The archives of Best Village is full, full okay. of rich, rich, rich literature. Yes, no, absolutely. And it's a discussion that has yes, been place, had yeah. before, and uh, we're interested, so... We'll talk. Yeah. All right. All right. On that note, so thank you to Trudy Dervitai of Flo. Thank you so much, Majala. Danielle Jones, thank VP you. Trinidad and Tobago, and Patricia Henderson Brown, Ministry of Development, Culture, and the Arts. Thank you. I'll take thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get up? Oh my. So I'm going to invite my colleague. Annabelle Alcazar, who's the program director at the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival. We're going to talk about um, the business side of film. Then we're going to talk about the films themselves. Annabelle, I'm not sure. No, you can't. I can't move the chair. I'm no, sorry. Right <laughs> Pardon. Stage direction. Morning, everybody. Is my other mic working? Yes. Okay. Is mine good? Okay. All right, Mirella. Right, so um, let's talk a bit about the industry program at the festival yep. um, this year. And one of the things that we are going to be uh, doing is something called the Power of Women in Film, which is a, 
a day of um, panels and discussions and short films um, looking at the issue of women and girls and the issues that affect them and the role that film plays. Try the other one. Try the other one. This one. I can talk loudly though. I have to tell you. Can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. About the team. No? Okay, this will need the mic. Okay. I think it's on. Yeah? Okay. The role that um, film plays, um, and the film is actually a powerful role, uh, not just in terms of uh, the Caribbean voice, but that voice of women and girls, often um, spoken more eloquently by women filmmakers. It's as simple as that. that um, so this is a day that is seeking to document, to highlight, to recognize the powerful role that female women filmmakers play in advancing social change, uh, challenging narratives around misogyny, etc., etc. Um, and the role they play in presenting their portrayal of women as three-dimensional characters um, with all their varying um, complexities and we are complex beings and really um, challenging some of the demeaning stereotypes that we have seen and in this current atmosphere of misogyny coming particularly from some parts of the world. In that global subculture, I think this is um, a really important time to be talking about the role of women uh, in film and the ways in which women and girls are portrayed and how um, that can be strengthened or changed. Uh, so that's what that day is. Sorry, I invited you up. Yes, I know. And then, yes, I, I noticed. Um, so I just want to add to that that um, that day is sponsored by UN Women, and we're working in partnership with the Institute for Gender and Development Studies at UWE, um, who've been very helpful in helping us put together the panels. So there are three panels, and each panel is kind of addressing a particular subject. One is objectification, one is uh, domestic violence and abuse of any kind, and then the third one is empowerment. Um, so I think they're, they're very strong panels, very important topics of discussion. Um, it's going to be a wonderful day. And in addition to that, we're showing, um, we're having three nights of what we're calling feminist cinema. So films that also address these topics. And these will be shown free at the Hyatt in the evenings. One is a wonderful film from Panama called La Matamoros, um, about uh, in the 40s a woman who was a seamstress who became a, a unionist and a very strong international activist on behalf of women. And then there are other films like um, Three Beauties, which we showed last year um, from Venezuela, and Izcanul from Guatemala. Anyway, wonderful films, all free at the Hyatt. And one of them is one of our favorites, Mustang. Um, yeah, and I think Mustang and Ixcanul are quite interesting because although we see ourselves as very removed from certain things, they deal with child marriages. And I just couldn't help thinking, oh, it's only last year, actually. I think, was it last year or this year that we removed that Might from our statute year. books? And mm -hmm. I know that it was... Widely contested. Great, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, some of them, some of these issues, even when they are not, um, the films are not Caribbean based. So Ixcanul, as an example, uh, is looking at an indigenous uh, young girl um, from, is it Mexico? Guatemala. Guatemala. Guatemala. And what happens to her? It, it deals with the plight of indigenous people. It deals with poverty and it deals with the treatment of women and girls. And when you combine all of those things, minority, poor, and... Uh, and female. And female, and it's a recipe for disaster. Anyway, it's a very good film. So yeah. let's move on. Um, so we're going to um, see a trailer from one of those films, which is Mustang.
Sizi rahattım. Ve birden her şey bu kadar. Anne bu kızdan bozuk çıkarsa sorumlu siz ayetsin. Sen babaanneliğin demek ki yapamadın demek ki zaman bu kadar yani şimdiye kadar demek ki. Hakkında en ufak bir kuşku olsaydı imkanı yok evlenemezsin yavrum. Ve şekilsiz bok rengi elbiseler giyme sırası bize gelmişti. Ben de biraz daha ne? biraz oldu. <gülüyor> Amca böyle görsün de sen aklın başına gelsin. Babaanne ben ikini seviyorum. Eğer beni ondan başka biriyle evlendirmeye kalkarsam çığlığı basarım. Ne diyorsun sen? Ve bu beşimizin son defa birlikte oluşuydu. İlk fırsatta gideceğiz. So that's Mustang. It's actually a film from Turkey, but it's a wonderful film. And I don't think we mentioned that the day for women in film is actually Friday the 22nd. Um, and again, it's all here at the Hyatt, all the panels and presentations and the cinema. So the cinema is Friday the 22nd, Saturday the 23rd, and the 24th. And it's no charge. And it's free of charge. Favorite trying to use word, free. Well, so it's both the, the cinema and the... And the panels are all free of charge, yes. Okay. So right. that's that. So Code Orange. Yeah, so let's talk about Code Orange. Code Orange. What is that? Yeah. So Code Orange is um, the name we've given to the Saturday day of events, which are the sort of industry proper. And we're really looking at regional incentives and co-productions that day, largely a, a large part of which is because as funding has become increasingly difficult for filmmakers, Throughout the region, Trinidad is no different from anywhere else. Uh, we realize that the filmmakers need to get more in inventive and to have a different ideas about how they can get their funding. I know some of them have done a great job already, Green Days and so on, but we need to see where we could have helped them. So we've invited um, speakers from uh, local, regional, and international to talk about various incentives. One of the speakers is Max Valverde, who is the Deputy Minister of Culture from, the, uh, from Costa Rica. And I must thank the Ambassador of Costa Rica for bringing, bringing him to us. And he's going to talk about possible opportunities for Trinidadian and Tobago, Tobagonian filmmakers, how they can work with counterparts in Costa Rica. Um, also, we have Rene Robinson, who's the Film Commissioner from Jamaica. Um, Nika Luke from Film TT and Cindy Gatt will also talk about BOD again, which is a, a regional incentive now for filmmakers. Um, so that's so that's one panel um, in the morning, and then um, the second panel is more co-productions proper. So there will be people um, like a producer called Samuel Chauvin. He's actually French, but he works a lot in the Caribbean, and. Um, is very interested in, in having more Caribbean projects to work on to, so that the filmmakers can find a way of accessing possible funding um, with companies in Europe or distributors in Europe or just, just it's just an, it's an, a largely an exploration of, of what can possibly happen in these modern days and, and, and more difficult times, I think, that everybody needs to think out of the box and we're trying to help them along the way. I think that's the best way I can say it. We're also going to be, um, <coughs> or during the festival, um, the Inter-American Development Bank, who are uh, one of our supporting sponsors, are going to be presenting um, uh, an event called um, the, uh, the Creative orange Industries economy. and the Orange Economy. Mm -hmm. So the Orange Economy, they, they've uh, done some research. So there are two publications about the Orange Economy. Um, that are online, I think, and they're going to talk a lot about this. But it's basically um, this massive amount of money that is uh, generated through the creative industries that is not on anybody's um, 
books, when people talk about the economy, they talk about the um, e energy economy, you know, the money th from energy or, you know, well, less and less from agriculture, but um, manufacturing. But we don't really talk about the creative sector and the economy um, that is there, the money that is generated by that in all sorts of areas. And so they're going to be doing a whole presentation on that with some facts and figures that will probably blow your mind. And it is not just about the film industry. Of course, film is part of it. But it's the wider sector um, uh, in the widest possible um, scope uh, that you can think about. Everybody who has an interest in the creative sector is invited. It is going to be on Sunday the 24th. 24th. Um, at, I think, two, is it 1.30? I think it's more in like the after. It, it will be on our on website. website yeah. um, but it is going to be a really interesting and fascinating uh, presentation and discussion after that. And uh, they are inviting, and we are also inviting as many people from the sector or have an interest in it. Uh, Danielle and others who are supporting the arts as well, you may find this quite ministry. fascinating. Ministry. The ministry and so on. So yeah. um, that's the orange economy. So if you've never heard of it before, that's, that's what it is. Um, so and, yes. Yeah, and then um, again, we are focusing a lot on script writing during this festival. Um, we had two workshops in March. Uh, one that we already talked about because the ministry is now doing part two. So it was a part one of a script writing uh, workshop that was sponsored by the Canadian High Commissioner. We thank you for that. So part two is now. So it's the same 15 participants coming back. And they've been mentored during the six months to produce a certain amount of work. And so they're going to be going through that. And then the second one that we had in March was actually a script development workshop some of the participants are here, like Sean. Hello, Sean. Um, and that was sponsored by the British Council. And um, teams were put together, a producer, a script writer, and a script editor. It was really focusing on script editing, which is something that is not really usually focused on in Trinidad and Tobago. It's a very important part of prepping your, your work. And um, so we've managed to persuade the British Council to do part two of that. So again, the 15 participants are coming back, having been mentored for the six months, and they're going to be updated and go through their work again with the same facilitator, and, um, which is wonderful. And then we're also having a separate script writing uh, workshop with the same facilitator, Ludo Smolsky, with 15 other script writers come in for two days with him to just do script writing as opposed to script development. So it, it sounds convoluted, but it's all getting to the same place. Prepping your work, the basic of all filmmaking is having a wonderful script. Um, and that's where we're trying, we went sort of back to basics and we try to really concentrate on that this year. That and Strengthen the voice. Strengthen the voice. Thank you, Magella. That's why right. you're PR. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Strengthening uh, our voice. Love. So one of the other things that we are going to be doing um, with um, RBC, Royal Bank, is uh, there are two youth-focused projects, um, Future Critics, um, which is um, working with uh, BC Perez as the mentor. Uh, he's going to be mentoring um, journalism students at COSTAT, um, and they are going to be looking at films critically and writing about them critically. Um, so that's the Future Critics program. And then there's also the Youth Jury Program, which some of you oh, are here. Are stand here? up, you oh, jury. Come on. Them. Bless them. You'll stand up. Oh. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, six, I didn't seven. see Josiah. Hello, Josiah. This is actually good because normally uh, we have about um, five youth jurors. We have seven this year because the standard was so high and we just couldn't cut it down, I imagine. So thank you, all of you. So these young people had to write in about their favorite film and why, what, what was, in other words, they had to give some kind of critical uh, thought to why, what it was about the film that they liked and they were judged on that and selected based on what they wrote. So these are the winners and they are going to be under, again, the uh, mentorship of BC Paris. Uh, they are going to be um, looking at films that have a youth protagonist or deal with issues that young people face. And they're going to choose a winner. 
and the winner of that, the film that wins, they're going to get a, a prize, a youth jury award at our award ceremony in, uh, later in September. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy all. it. You're going to have fun. And the idea really behind it is that um, we, part of our work and our mandate is also to develop an audience for um, Caribbean cinema, but also to bring more young people into it um, and develop what I would say are transferable skills. So, you know, whether it's critical thinking, looking at films critically um, and having an understanding of that. Uh, and that in turn develops and continues to build on this love of film and Caribbean film and independent film. So that's what these youth programs are about. But thank you to all of you. All right. So right. I guess we need to talk Mom, about the we films. We should talk about films now. Yeah, let's talk about the films. <laughs> I mean, that is what we do after all, show films. Yeah. Um, so all right. what, what do we... I normally say... You want say the bounty of the whole thing? What is new, in it, what, mm. what is new this year? We were doing uh, a lot of what we do. Yes. Anything um, different? Well, I mean, the one thing that stands out for me, a couple of things, actually. First of all, we're going to be in San Fernando for the week for the first time, Movie Town San Fernando. I mean, we've always had great screenings on San Fernando Hill and wherever we've been, and they're always saying, we want more, we want more, so they're going to get more. So we hope they enjoy it. And I think the other slightly new, different thing is that whole day, the 24th, which is completely dedicated purely and utterly to TNT films. This is Focus TNT. Focus TNT. Uh, sponsored by the Ministry sponsored as part by the of ministry. I think that's patriotism really exciting. Month. Yeah. Um, the fact that we have an abundance of films to be shown for an entire day is spectacular. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. So let's talk about let's the talk Trinidad about and Tobago. Let's start yeah. with the feature <laughs> films. So, let's talk about the feature films. So, um, as you and I were talking before, but it's amazing for the last couple of years, I mean, I've been with the festival for 11 years, this is my 11th year, and we were sort of having to sort of drag out the beginning find one feature that we could possibly you know, show now, last year, this year, and maybe even this earlier. You know, we've got four or five um, TNT features. So, um, I won't we'll talk about the only night I want to talk sort of to further on. We've got Over the Journey, which is a great film by Ashley Anderson, which was shot down in Southlands. Um, very interesting. Then we've got Back to Freeport, I don't know if Kyle slightly over there. Um, that's the sort of UE student film, I believe. Um, so, so that's a kind of a comedy. Back to Freeport. The Lies We Tell, we have like Lucy Dancing, very much as an adult. Um, bad Housewife, people just play with everyone. <laughs> sort of thing. Um, which would be very popular. Quick pick um, Tobago film. Amazing. Feature from Tobago. Um, also comedy. Also comedy. Yes. Yeah, you can imagine what it's about. about. So, um, yeah, actually, uh, he thinks he's won the lottery. So, he's spending money from the drug lord. He may have actually won. He's spending the money before he's actually using it. Sounds like a very tricky piece, right? I'm sure it would be very popular. So, those are the features. And I will just. Yeah, and then shorts, very strong selection of shorts. Such a wide variety. I think that's what's inspirational to me too as a program director. But the subjects are just so varied, you can't, you, you just can't imagine. So we've got everything from uh, short drop, film by Ryan Jose, Salty Dog, I only know about the guy in the city, I always have to watch a and you can't quite go. Temple by the Sea, great animated film by Kevin Ball about the Temple by the Sea, yes. um, which is beautiful. And then there are actually three films about three lands, to be <coughs> a game, as we've heard, and also there's bird song, and to be an all-star. So, you know, just such a variety, and then all of these will be, you know, we'll a lot of them play for one afternoon, and I've got other times as well. Um, and then I'd like to especially mention The Weekend, by Mr. Hodgson, who's very, Quietly down in the back the corner there. I know it's long awaited and much awaited, and um, I know it will be very popular at the festival. And we have a trailer for the end.
why this happened. Too much drama in this house. I am shocked that you would think that I would tell people's business just like that. Is there any reason you are in my room? Everyone's here, you don't know that. Everyone. I a scene? I will show you a scene! Alright, I'm going by the grocery. Tell Christy I'll be back. You mean Paula? We in Blanche shares. Plenty, plenty back and all, as you can see. I Lots of fun. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I really love as well, I would, you know, the scripts and all of that is great, but the cinematography, when you see mm. local films and you see places you yeah. recognise or you see the aerial shots, we saw it last year, yeah. you know, with Play the Devil and The Cutlass and, you know, again, Green Days, it's yeah. very, it's green, Moko Jambi. it's beautiful. And, and Moko, Moko Jambi's all in the south. And we're seeing yeah. the Sean's film as well. And Freeport, we see Freeport. Yeah, it's nice. I like seeing children. We're driving back to Freeport. Nice. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Moving on. Um, so films okay. from the wider, wider Caribbean. Caribbean. Yes, from the wider Caribbean. Okay, so that takes in exactly what it says. Um, I just, you know, we have got so many wonderful films. I can only choose one or two. So I, I, I tend to go for my favorites. I'm sorry. Um, Last days in Havana. We always get very strong films from Cuba. You know, they've got such a history. And Their industries how old? I don't know, but a lot, a lot longer more, than ours. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they've got a very strong industry and very vibrant industry. In spite of their financial difficulties, they make amazing films. And Last Days in Havana is no exception. Make sure and go and see it. Um, Cargo by Kareem Mortimer from the Bahamas. Um, Kareem has been coming to the festival on and off for years. He was actually this film was actually part of the Caribbean Film Act that we had in 2015, so it's wonderful to see it come to fruition. It's been widely acclaimed in festivals throughout the world, I think, and he's coming to screen it with us. It deals with human trafficking. It deals with human tra trafficking, exactly. But um, from the point of view of the trafficker. From, yes, exactly. It's interesting. An interesting it's take on it, mm. yeah. Um, so we're very happy with that. And then Carpenteros, a film from the DR. Carpenteros translates as woodpeckers, you will explain what woodpeckers are. I'm going to give that over to you. But it's a love story set in two prisons, two real prisons in the Dominican Republic, one for men, one for women. Um, and they're next to each other. There's just some yard space that between. separates them. And woodpeckers. Is so what? this is a true thing. It's not a documentary, though, but it's, an it's based on facts. So the, the prisoners have developed uh, their own language, sign language almost, um, and they communicate across the yard from behind their bars and windows and they have relationships they never ever get to meet and consummate them but they have these relationships and the language they've developed is called or what they do communicating across the yard is called woodpecking so that's where the title comes yeah. from yeah. and the filmmaker's father i'm not sure i worked in the prison but certainly he was accustomed to going to these prisons and he yeah. developed this film based on that experience and it's all shot in on real locations yeah. in the in those prisons. And some of the prisoners, real prisoners, yeah. are in it. Yeah. yeah. So it's a very very powerful film. Do try and get to see that. And we have the trailer of Carpenteros. Tiene curiosos. Yo. Llegaste a Vietnam, papá. El único que te puede resolver algo aquí soy yo. Que no tienes nada que resolver. ¿Qué fue, príncipe? ¿No te gustó el hotel? Bacano, ¿qué tú quieres? Que tú eres nuevo y tú necesitas a alguien que te cuide, así de simple. Mientras tú me sigas la corriente, no hay problema. ¿Qué diablo es lo que tú quieres que yo haga, Lima? Yo lo que quiero es que tú agarres, me le mandes un par de mensajes a la carpintera a mí. Carpintero, ¿qué significa eso? Como los tigres se gabean en la verja para estar hablando con uno, por eso que le dicen así. Ella como que me 
pregunto por ti. Yo me llamo Janet. ¿De qué tú quieres? Aquí cada carpintero tiene su sueño con su carpintero. ¿Qué dice? Ella habla que si tú eres el preso, que no manga mucho tiempo. ¿Te mandó algo Janelli? Yo ni la vi. Ten mucho cuidado con hablarme de mentira, mi oíste. Yo tengo oído por todas estas rejas. Si yo me entero de algo, te bajo de oído, lo estoy diciendo. Una vez tú te enamorado de ella, ¿A quién? Tampoco enamorarse no está mal. ¿O tú te estás enamorando del mamagüevo con el que te estoy mandando los mensajes? Dime. No sé. Tú sabes que yo no hago coro con hombre cuernero. Que yo me entere que tú estés saliendo con otro mamagüevo. Que yo me entere nada más. You said it was a love story. Well, it is a love story, but it's also a thriller. Yeah. It describes yeah. as a thriller it's as well. Many things. Okay. Um, that's the wider Caribbean. So we're on to Panorama. Panorama. Um, okay. So Panorama so films are films from beyond the yeah. Caribbean. Traditionally, our heritage countries, which basically means anywhere, fortunately for us as Trinidadians. So it's a great way of putting it. Um, I'm just focusing on three. Uh, two are biographical films, one's a documentary, one's a narrative. The narrative is Neruda from Chile. It's um, a narrative film on the Chilean poet Pablo Neruda. Very non-linear in its treatment of this particular chapter in his life. Um, it has in it, I can't remember the name of the lead actor who plays Neruda, but it's also got Gabriel, Gael Garcia Bernal, who we all love, who plays this sort of detective who chasing after him, so it's a great film. And then I Am Not Your Negro, a documentary uh, based on James Baldwin's unfinished film, unfinished book, sorry, Remember This House, where he's writing about his three friends, Medgar Evers, Evers Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X on their lives and their deaths. And so the film, All the words in the film are actually Baldwin's words that he was writing for that book, narrated by Samuel Jackson, very powerful images. And um, what's amazing about it, as we were talking before, that you know James Baldwin has been dead 30 years this year. Sorry, I get very emotional. And it's still so resonant in the world today that it's the same problems that we're dealing with as he was dealing with 30, 60 years ago. Do I need to get you some tissues? Um, I have tissues, actually. You okay. know, I always cry at every festival event. I got them. And, um, I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> and then uh, the, other, the, the other film that I want to talk about is called The Violin Teacher, a gem of a film from Brazil, really uplifting, wonderful film about a very talented violin teacher who doesn't get the job he wants in the very posh orchestra and is forced to take a job, well, not forced to, but he agrees to take a job teaching kids in the favelas. Um, it's just great. I love it. Fabulous soundtrack, um, all set in the favelas of Rio, and wonderful, uplifting film. Don't miss it. Don't miss any of them, actually, so I don't know. I don't know how you're going to do for your two weeks. And yes, trailer for Violin Teacher. Thank you, Majera, for keeping me on track. Bom dia a todos, bem-vindos à Sala São Paulo. Senhor Laerte dos Santos. Uma ótima prova.
Nossa, ela me falou de um trabalho numa favela, de aula de música pra criança e tal. Vamos lá sair com uma onda. Olha, esse é o Laércio, é o mesmo professor de vocês. Então, vamos tocar uma música de boas-vindas pro Laércio? Ah. Um, dois, três, quatro. Eu acho que a gente tem que começar praticamente do zero, né? Três, quatro. Vamos se animar? Vamos lá acordar? Acordar? Como é que tá lá a escola. Parou, parou, parou, parou, parou, parou, parou. Você tá indo longe demais. Aquilo lá é uma panela de pressão, você não faz ideia. Ah, eu... Marmita devagar. Não vou ficar lá muito tempo, não. Vou só. Vai ter um menino lá que é impressionante. Incrível. E que você que não pode matar a violino neste alvo. Quando a gente vai tocar essa música? A gente vai dar um jeito nisso. Vai, vai, vai, vai, vai! Toca essa porra, caralho! Eu toquei muito bem. Pô, na audição você devia ter apontado a arma pra minha cabeça. Quem sabe assim eu não passava. Vai, Thaís. Deixa eu ver quem vai ser. Estava falando lá ontem na Osesp. Samuel. Você não é pra chefe de nada. Você não pode ficar com a gente, pelo menos até a apresentação pra ontem. Você tá nem aí pra ninguém. Eu tô morando fora de casa hoje, por causa que eu não visitei você. So that's just a taste um, of some of the films that we have. Um, and then we must talk about Costa Rica. Um, many thanks to the Embassy of Costa Rica for bringing these films to us. They are our country in focus this year. We've got two features and two shorts. And um, also, as I mentioned, uh, the Deputy Minister of Culture, Mr. Va Max Valverde, will be here for that panel day. And also Laura Avila. Tascan, who is the producer of one of the films, Entonces Nosotros. Um, Costa Rica is a really interesting sort of parallel country in a way. I mean, it's very like us. It's, you know, it's rainforest and tropical and so on and so forth. So it's very interesting to see films from there and how, how things could sort of parallel. And I know he's coming to try and, well, to talk about possible co-productions and what incentives and things that they can have. And, how filmmakers can maybe work together. I think that's really what we're trying to get from that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to look at a trailer for one of the features, which is called Viaje, meaning journey. Tener un hijo yo, y luego los viernes salís vos, y los sábados salgo yo. O turnamos los viernes, una hora así. Buenísimo, sí, eso es lo que hay que hacer. ¿Cómo es que te llamabas?
Okay, so um, next one is lipstick under my burqa. I know that's one of your favorites. Oh, I love this. Love lipstick. So it's a um, great film from India. Um, it follows the secret lives of four women who are all in search of a little freedom, each in their own way. Anything you want to add to that? I think they're all just facing different circumstances. Mm -hmm. So there's a young girl who um, works in her family's uh, factory. They make burkas, I think, mm -hmm. and she uh, comes up. But um, she loves who's the American pop singer? Uh, somebody like Miley, Miley Cyrus or something. And you know, so she's secretly sneaking out and wanting to sing and all of those sorts of things. There's one that's conducting two relationships. There's an older woman. The best one is the older woman who has been, I guess, cloistered for a long time with her family. And then she goes swimming and she falls for the swimming instructor who's much younger than her, could be her son, and then starts conducting. He doesn't know, or he doesn't even like her, but he, um, they start having these telephone conversations, which are very risque. So that it, it's, it's fun and it's Again, you know, um, seeing things from a different perspective. Uh, you get the Hollywood view of India, and you know, and, and then you get other views that are coming out of the country. So it's an interesting film. Yeah, it's done very well on the festival circuit. So Doing very well on the festival yeah. circuit. Yeah, so let's have a look at Lipstick Under My Burqa trailer. लड़की की लाइफ में आता है जब उसमें औरत बनने की चाहत जाग उठती है रिहाना बेदी और मेरा गाना सेवन थिंग से इंस्पायर लो आगे भोपाल की ब्रिटनी नंबर थ्री रोजी की ख्वाहिशें भी रोज की तरह खिल रही थी ये फोटोज ना लॉटरी की टिकट है आप दोनों का आपस में कुछ रिश्ता रिश्ता है लो खंडहर से घर के एक बंद कमरे में रोजी अपने जवान रंगी अरमानों के साथ बिल्कुल अकेली मतलब नाम बताओ अपना बुआ जी किसकी बुआ जी मेरी बुआ जी तो नहीं हो पर्दे बड़े मोटे थे अंधेरे में रोजी को कोई देख नहीं पाता लाइफ में सिर्फ बच्चे ही पैदा करने हैं या कुछ और भी प्लान है तुम्हारा कंडोम बोलते हैं इसको दरअसल वो जज्बात में बह जाते हैं तो उस टाइम कौन Okay, that's lipstick under my burqa. So um, the final one we're going to talk about is uh, the film celebrating Canadian diversity. Um, can you not hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. Um, so again, thanks to the Canadian High Commission for helping us to bring this film. Um, very interesting film. Magella will talk a little bit about it. Um, it's well, you'll get into what it's called at the end of what you're going to say. So you talk about it a little bit. Well, it's called um, okay. Two soft things, two hard things, and it really is. It's a documentary, um, and it's set in Northwest Canada, um, where there is an Inuit community. So the filmmakers had heard that there was going to be. Um, uh, a gay pride event and thought that would be an interesting 
thing to film because there's an Inuit community. Um, but in going there and beginning this work, it um, really became a layered discussion around um, different conceptions, I guess, of gender and sexuality. But more than that, it looks at a dramatic period in the 1950s um, when, uh, because of colonialism and Western religion and all of that, um, the indigenous people were shamed into um, believing that their traditions were wrong and blasphemous and less than. And so over a, within a generation, um, you know, family structures had been lost and cultural practices and spirituality, etc., had been lost as kids got put into these schools, religious schools, and away from their, you know, family, et cetera, et cetera. We know those stories from around the world. So um, this new, there's a new generation of activists and LGBT uh, people, et cetera, who are working to unshame that history and that tradition and to rediscover things about themselves. And one of the things that they discovered that is within the language of the Inuit people, there is a word for um, uh, female on female relationships and male on male. And the female on female is, translates into two soft things bumping against each other. And the male is, translates into two hard things knocking against each other. So that's the name of the film. That's where the film gets the name from. Two uh, soft things, two hard things. So it is about, I mean, it's Canadian diversity because Canada is very diverse. Um, there are all sorts of people that live there, have come there, or who originated there. And this is the story um, from an LGBT perspective, I guess, about one of those groups of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just to add to that, that um, uh, one of the activists or in the film, Alison Brewer, will be here uh, and part of a panel um, at the screening of the film, which will be here at the Hyatt on Sunday the 24th at 3.30, I believe it's 3.30. So there'll be a Q&A. The High Commissioner will kindly introduce the film. It'll be a Q&A and a panel um, with other local activists as well to discuss the, many of the issues that come out of the film and so on and so forth. So very important film. Very glad that we're showing it. Thank you very much, High Commissioner. And um, yes, two soft things, two hard things. Do you have the trailer? No, don't think no? so. Yes, yeah, trailer. Sorry, beg your pardon. Do you have the trailer? Keep me on track. I've always envisioned a place where people of all ages work together and do not work against any minority group. Because as Inuit, we have suffered greatly in our land, and I'm sh I was sure that we would not want to inflict suffering upon others. Inuit went through a very sudden and drastic transitional period in the 1950s and 60s uh, with colonization. We were drilled that there was a process of trying to assimilate us into becoming something other than what we were. And with that transition came a lot of um, shame. Uh, people were made to feel less than and unimportant. Isolation and la losing community is, is our sentiments that LGBTQ have throughout their life anyway. And double that with loss of cultural identity. It's extremely difficult and painful, I think, for a lot of people. I have people in my life that I love very much. Uh, who are gay. And could never tell anybody. I knew that if I didn't leave, I was gonna die there. I chose to be homeless in Ottawa opposed to going back home because I just felt like it was the only way that I would be able to survive. One of the things we kept hearing from politicians was the elders don't like this. Uh, this is something that has come up from the South. There's never been homosexuality in Nunavut. This is something brand new. There is a hidden history there around uh, familial relations, sexuality, uh, and ways of being in, in Inuit society that aren't being necessarily spoken about openly. There's actually words for uh, gay and lesbian um, that elders 
have shared. Like the translation was lesbian was two soft things rubbing against each other, and then the men was two hard things rubbing against each other. Um, again, free of charge, everybody's invited to come. It's going to be an important um, screening and panel on that Sunday, the 24th. I don't know how you're going to juggle between going to movie town to see all the TT films and then back and forth at Hyatt, but it's not far. It's just down the road, so you can back and forth quite easily. It's going to be um, a very packed two weeks for anybody that loves film. One Sorry, one week, beg your pardon. I'm going back to the old days. One week, two screens, that's what it is. Um, okay, so we're now going back to the beginning of the festival at the end of our chat here. So we will talk a little bit about Green Days by the River. I think by now everybody knows that it is our opening night film. Um, very proud that it is. Um, it's great that it's another TNT feature. We're absolutely delighted that we can do that. Um, the opening is at Napa on the 19th of September, gala opening red carpet something. Um, hopefully there'll be a lot of the cast members there, many of whom we've already met this evening. Um, and Michael Anthony, of course, the author of the book, who has a, a very nice little cameo in the film that we saw. Um, I know he's delighted with the end result and so on, so hopefully he'll be there. Yep, so we're all looking forward to that. Michael Mouladar and Christian James, I know he's not here today. And many congratulations to all your cast. Sudai Tafari, I know you're here. And I know Che Rodriguez is very much here, or was. Anna. Pardon? Anna. And Anna. Anna. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, great. So we're thrilled. Um, we're thrilled that this is what we're opening with. And we're closing our session on films. Um, with the trailer. With the trailer of Green Days. Just to say, there, as you can see, there is a vast variety of films. And I've only touched on some. We have over 120 films that we're showing, shorts and features. Something for everyone, all great, a veritable feast. Enjoy. The trailer. The trailer. Lights. <laughs> How's your car doing? Not doing so good, I'm just like, I can't do this. I'm just kidding, but I just told you all, tell your mother, that the boy come with me. Come here. Ain't he the man who Rosalie did show the place when all of them just move up here last month? Rosalie? Mm -hmm. I want to go in the bush with Mr. Gadari tomorrow. Gadari? Oh, you mean the man with the Creole wife? Yeah. Where you want to go? In the land. Hey, always keep your cutlass in your hand when you're in the bush, boy. You never know what could happen. <laughs> Give me that. You don't give me that. You from down the beach. And down the beach, people don't know nothing about bush. Life, this life ain't easy. Matter what it seems. Still, I'm holding. You enjoying it? Where's the dreams I lived in the river? Got to make it now on my own. She's some sound again. I see. I thought you was the front, but you just like blasted Joe and all the rest of them drunk. Don't rule me. I didn't do that I'm lazy, man. It's something to make them get fierce. No secondary help! It's something to make with a shell, and you ain't stupid. I love this land to the bad boy. I believe in that. I'm planting with that. So that's on that films. note, yes. Um, <clears throat> I am going to invite questions from the floor if there are any, and it can be for any of the speakers that were up here before. But before I do that, 
Um, please allow me to again acknowledge our sponsors and partners. I know Bruce did some of that at the beginning, but none of this festival um, would be possible without them. And it's not just the week in September, it's the year long work. Um, so again, we thank our presenting sponsor, who is Flo, our leading sponsors, BP Trinidad and Tobago and the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts. Our supporting sponsors, UN Women and the Inter-American Development Bank. Our contributing sponsor is RBC Royal Bank. Official partners, uh, we're partnering, partnering with North 11, who do uh, most of our tech most of, for most of the year, and they're here with us today. Um, the Hyatt Regency Trinidad, who is our festival hotel, Script J and Boss. Boss provided the furniture, but Script J provides so much of our uh, stationery, the guides, and so on. Um, our partners, 519 Trinidad, and we're having a lime. We didn't say that, but we're having uh, two pre festival limes to get people in the mood to distribute guides and meet the filmmakers, etc. etc. Uh, the first one is this Friday, the 8th of September, at Drink uh, Bistro and Lounge in Woodbrook, but the other one is. Um, at 519, which is in the C3 Center in San Fernando. It's our first pre-festival lime in San Fernando. We're really excited. We're hoping that we can bring the Port of Spain posse down with us, and maybe uh, we'll get San Fernando to come up to Port of Spain as well. Anyway, uh, 519 is one of our partners, as is All Italian, uh, who provide wines. The British Council, um, we've been doing a lot of work with them, and we're glad for the continuing partnership. Copa Airlines is bringing in some of the uh, filmmakers. Drink, Lounge and Bistro, we've mentioned already. 868 Live, thank you guys. They've live streamed us free of charge. Uh, we're very thankful for that. Um, MEP, um, who produce uh, Caribbean Beat and other publications. NUF, who are the photographers, the Netflix. festival photographers and videographers, and um, they always go over and beyond. Fusion, OMG uh, magazine, going to be featuring Green Days and some other of the filmmakers. Zoom Caribbean. Um, and then we have our programming partners. We've talked about some of the embassies, but all of them are. The Embassy of Costa Rica, who are our country in focus. The Embassy of Panama, the Embassy of Mexico, and, of course, we mentioned uh, the Canadian High Commission. And, and then our venue partners, of course, Movie Town, and that's in San Fernando, uh, Port of Spain and Tobago and the University of the West Indies. So thank you to all of you for your contributions. And so I should also um, tell the media we have electronic press kits this year. So you can um, either have us email them to you. We've emailed them to your editors already. Or you can go onto our website and, and get them there. Um, so I invite if there are any questions from the floor, uh, please feel free. Or have not, we covered everything? If not, everything? that's fine. <laughs> We've talked a lot. Anybody? You can stand up if you have a question or raise your hand. No? Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so on that note, what we're going to do now, um, well, we're inviting all of you to have some eats and drinks with us, but we're also going to do some photo calls for the media. Um, so um, our sponsors, the filmmakers, uh, IGDS, I think... Um, Somebody's Angelique, here. Angelique and Angelique is here. Yeah. Yes. Um, RBC and the Youth Jury, the ambassadors who are here, and the high commissioners, um, and so on. So um, we'll organize you, but the rest of you, please feel free to have some. Well, everyone can eat and drink, but we'd like to get the photo calls say, done first. Can you, and also, the final photograph will be the TTFF team. At which point I cried. Thank you, everyone.